Depending on where you are today, it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It's a real joy and a privilege to be here again to share God's Word through Chet TV. I want to read just a couple of verses from John's Gospel, and Jesus is speaking and says, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Bless the Lord. Wow, what a powerful verse from the Word of God. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So the question is, what does it really mean? Is this Bible verse applicable, adaptable, relevant, or is it even meaningful to us today? So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so how do we take this Bible verse from the intellectual, from the mind, to the spiritual, to the heart, to the essence of who we are in Christ. Jesus, in teaching freedom, the, the receiving of that message would often depend upon us as individual people, on our persuasions, our different perspectives, our convictions within us. And so the question I want to ask again, is the Bible verse relevant for today? In Christ Jesus, the Bible says, we are free. Well, free from what? Free from sin? Free from trouble? Free from fear? There are a number of things that we can claim to be free from because of Jesus. First of all, you and I, when we come into that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we are free from the bondage of sin. Amen. Now, for something or someone to be liberated, it must first of all be bound or imprisoned or incarcerated. And that's exactly where we were when we were living our lives in sin. You and I were previously held under the bondage of sin. We were held captive by the impulses of sin. We had no power to overcome the influence of sin. Sin was our ruler. Sin held us captive. Sin held us in bondage. Before we accepted Christ, whatever sin wanted is what sin got. Now, this doesn't mean necessarily that we were out living a wild lifestyle. It could have meant that, but not necessarily. It simply means that the primary authority in our lives before we met the Lord Jesus Christ was sin, our sinful nature. And in Romans 6 and verse 14, Paul references sin as our master. Imagine. But then, after referencing sin as our master, Paul goes on to say this, and I quote from Romans 6, 17 and 18. He said, But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Praise the Lord. And so today we want to rejoice that because of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are free from the bondage of sin. Number two, we are free from the penalty of sin. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's be frank today. Outside of Christ, we all had an eternal death sentence. That's right. You and I were on death row. We may not have understood it and probably didn't grasp the gravity of it, but that's where we were. Jesus took our sins upon himself, amen, and through his substitutionary death on the cross, you and I have been free from that penalty. Christ took our sin upon his shoulders, he bore it to Calvary, and he paid the penalty for something that you and I ought to have paid. The Bible says, he made him, God made Jesus, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, today as a child of God, I am free from the bondage of sin. Because I'm a child of God, I'm free from the penalty of sin. And number three, because of that relationship with Christ, I am free from the guilt and the shame of sin. Question, have you ever experienced the feeling of guilt? Just think about it now. The feeling of guilt. Have you ever felt shame for things you have done in the past? To be honest, I have. Have you ever repented but felt you needed to repent again because you felt so bad that you wanted to make sure that God really forgave you? To live with sin and guilt is difficult in the life of any individual. We have all done things that we are ashamed of. Things that we don't want to repeat or relive. Things that we wish we could take back and never do again. We all have the capacity to relive our bad deeds and questioning why we did what we did in the past. But when we do this, when we live in the past, and choose sometimes to struggle with that shame and that sin and that failure, then we are taking away the joy of the present. We're taking away the fun of living a full life for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know today, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't have to live with the shame of the past. One of the biggest weapons that Satan can and will use against us is encouraging us to look back at the shameful moments of our past. And when we focus on the past, we cannot overcome the guilt and the shame and the sense of self-condemnation. And this will ultimately strip away our joy. It will rob us of our peace and live a life without any meaningful purpose. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. If you're struggling today and still feel something of the bondage of sin, or you're grappling with the question of the penalty of sin, or with the guilt of your past, because of your relationship with Jesus Christ and Christ personally taking up residence in your life, you are free from the past and you are living a new life. Let me repeat the verse again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Because we are forgiven, we are forgiven completely and totally. Sin, shame, and guilt is dealt with when Jesus sets us free. Amen. We don't have to carry that burden of guilt. We don't have to carry the burden of shame anymore. We don't have to live under the threat of spiritual death because of past sin. We are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we are set free. It's not just being set free from the past, but we are set free now to become engaged in the ministry of reconciliation. We can become engaged in the sharing of the gospel. We can become engaged in sharing the good news that Jesus Christ loves the world. So he doesn't just save us from the past and then leave us in isolation. There is a ministry out there. Maybe there's a ministry in your community. Maybe a ministry in your local church. Maybe a ministry within your family. Today, you have the freedom to reach into that ministry, be used by God for His glory, and bring love and joy and peace in a world that seemed to be shattered by so many negative events of the past. I'm free in Jesus. And I want to read again just a reminder of the words of Jesus from John's Gospel. He is speaking to the Jews speaking to the disciples. He is speaking to us today about this problem with sin. Let the Word of God speak into your heart. I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And Jesus goes on to say, I, I know you're Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your Father. Even in a moment of friction, when people were out to almost destroy Jesus, to eradicate his name, to take away the message of hope that he was speaking, Jesus still looked into the masses of people and said, but I love you and I can set you free. Pray today that God will enter your life through the Holy Spirit and that freedom that Jesus talked about more than 2,000 years ago will be your freedom today. God bless you. Let me just pray with you. Lord, I ask today that this simple message, this meditation, will reach into the hearts of people, into the homes, into families, into people around this great country, and we will rise up and we will claim on the authority of the Word of God in Christ Jesus I am free. Yes, I am free indeed. God's blessings. Have a great day. Amen.